Hi folks, this is Audio Bird, and today I'm going to show you how you can take this ordinary Folgers coffee can and turn it into a nice extension speaker for use with your iPod, your stereo, or any other audio device. Now these are very ubiquitous. You can find them uh, in your cupboard at home probably, or in your local dumpster. They have a nice lid that snaps off, and there's quite a lot of room inside uh, for use as a speaker enclosure. The first thing we're going to have to do is prepare our lid to accept the speaker that we've chosen. And today we've chosen a nice little three inch uh, full range, what we call a full range speaker that uh, you can use. Now these are available from a company called PartsExpress.com. They have a variety of three and four inch speakers that you can use. Or you might have some automotive speakers laying around the house that uh, from an old junk car or maybe from a junk stereo and you can also use these in your uh, coffee can. It, three to four inches is the maximum diameter that will fit inside the uh, can. The first thing you have to do, you have to prepare your lid. And what I've done here, I've taken my compass and I've measured the diameter of this particular speaker and I'm going to make a circle here all the way around and then I'm going to cut it out with my carton knife. And you've got to be very careful when you do this. You don't want to hurt yourself. It's very easy to cut. As you can see, this plastic cuts very easily. Okay, we're going to go on and cut this, and then we'll come back later on and show you how the rest of it goes. Okay, we're back here working on our Folger coffee speaker. Notice we've taken our lid, and we've cut it out so that it will fit the approximate diameter of the speaker, as you see here. Looks, looks nice. And we've also matched the holes of the speaker up and drilled some holes in the lid so that we uh, can put some bolts in there and bolt it down. Now, in order to make, you see this lid is pretty flimsy. It's, uh, it's not very sturdy. In order to make it a little bit more sturdy, we need to build us a, uh, a uh, baffle, if you will. And I, I took a little piece of Luan plywood that I had, an eighth inch. And I've cut it out and drilled some holes in it. I've cut it out the same diameter of the speaker. As you can see, it'll fit right on the speaker. It'll match up the holes rather nicely. And if we put our lid on here, this is what it's going to look like when we do our uh, when you do, we do our speaker. We'll come back later on and show you how it looks once it's bolted in. And we're going to solder some wire to it and mount it in our coffee can. Okay, we've got our speaker now mounted to our baffle board that we made into the lid of the can. Now we're going to take some washers and some 632 nuts. I'm using half-inch screws in this case on the, uh, on the system to bolt it in. And we'll get them in there. And you want to tighten it down pretty snug because you're going to be dealing with some audio here. You want to make sure that it goes through pretty solidly. Okay, we're going to go ahead and do this on all four corners, and then we'll attach some wire to the speaker and mount it in its cabinet. All right, we've got our speaker firmly mounted now onto our baffle board, as you can see, what it looks like here on the front. We have to make a modification yet to our cabinet, to our enclosure here, in order to get our speaker wire. And what I've done, I've drilled a quarter-inch hole in the bottom here. And I'm going to run our speaker wire through that quarter inch hole. It says ordinary zip code type uh, zip line, we call it, speaker code. <coughs> one, one of them has a uh, white stripe on it, and that's the positive side. You want to remember that. You want to make sure you get that attached to the positive terminal, also on the speaker and your amplifier. Now we're going to put this through the bottom, fill the hole, and pull it through so we can have enough room to solder it to the speaker. Now, the next thing we're going to do while we've got this pulled in here, <coughs> uh, we're going to have to add a little bit of stuffing into the back of the speaker enclosure because we've got a lot of energy that's going to be coming back into the speaker, uh, into the cabinet from the speaker, and we want to make sure it's properly absorbed. So we're going to take some ordinary polyester stuffing. This stuff is available at your Walmart store or your local craft store. They use it for pillows and blankets and projects and so forth. <coughs> I'm using about 15 ounces of it here, and I'm stuffing it down inside the box, inside the uh, can very carefully. 
and that's about enough. You don't want too much in it. You don't want it too solid. You want to want to be able to absorb some of the uh, the sound. And theoretically, this actually makes the enclosure seem a little bit bigger to the speaker when you do that. So it gives you a little bit more volume when you add add stuffing to it. Now, the next next thing we're going to do, we're going to solder the wires to our speaker. And again, I'm using this uh, color coded wire. We want to make sure you get the one with the white stripe on it. This one to the positive terminal on the speaker. And uh, most loudspeakers will have either a red dot or have a little positive plus sign on the uh, speaker terminal and allow you to do that. So we're going to go ahead and solder this on, and then we're going to come back and finish up our uh, project. OK, we're going to solder our second wire on. I've got the first one already attached here. We're going to get the second one soldered on. And I like to use a large solder gun for these. Make sure you want a good solid connection on your speaker. You don't want any rattles. All right, that's completed. Now, we're going to take our speaker and our housing here with our stuffing. We're going to pull the wire through very carefully through the bottom. And we're going to take our speaker and we're going to snap it right into the lid like this. And there you have it. I'm going to pull a little more wire through the bottom. You can. Now, this is what the basic unit looks like. Now, we have to make one more little modification if we're going to have this thing to work properly. One of the issues is when you play music through this, if you don't have the lid solidly held down, it will come off. It will actually blow off on some of the harder passages of bass. So what we've done, we've taken a small drill and we've drilled a hole on either side of the can lid here. And what we're going to do is we're going to insert a half inch, a little half inch, self-tapping sheet metal screw. It's called a number four, I believe, that you can get at your local hardware store. And if they hold, it will hold the lid on rather solidly once you get them uh, mounted. So we're going to put one on this side, right into the can lid. We're going to do the same thing on the opposite side, directly opposite the can. Uh, the screw that we put on the uh, on that side. And we'll take our drill and we'll drill a hole through the can lid and into the can itself. Lift the can and put another half inch self-tapping screw in there. Okay, we've got our speaker just about completed. Now you could use it just like this if you wanted to. You could build a pair of these, hook them up to your right and left channel of your stereo, and use them as an omnidirectional speaker. Uh, in your room. But if you want to make it a little bit neater speaker, we'll show you what we've done with another one we've, we've built here. Here we have a very similar speaker we just built. You'll notice we have a grill on it on the front here. And this is made out of ordinary fiberglass uh, screen wire that you can buy at your local hardware store. And we also built a little cradle for it. You notice on the bottom here we've got a three quarter inch piece of of dowel rod, and we cut out a couple of pieces of scrap pine and cut them out to the approximate curve of the speaker. And we've mounted it on the bottom. What I use to mount these on is ordinary double sided tape that you can buy at your, uh, get, get at your hardware store and may have around the house. It'll fit nicely in that cradle. Now, one other modification that we made, I upgraded the, the, the terminals on this a little bit. I found some 1 and 7 eighth inch terminals uh, online at uh, partsexpress.com, and these are little snap in terminals. So you can actually attach your speaker wire right to the speaker uh, directly without having to run through a hole in the bottom. And uh, it makes it a little bit more work to do this, but it makes, I think, a very neat, uh, a neater speaker. And this way you can use them sitting on a bookshelf uh, as a pair together, and they, they, they work very well that way. Now let me show you how we made the grill cloth. You might be interested in seeing that technique. We took a piece of that ordinary uh, eighth-inch Luan plywood, and we cut it out first to the diameter approximately uh, of the uh, uh, inside of the can lid. And then we, uh, the outside of the can lid, and then we stapled, cut the uh, screen wire out about an inch larger than the size of the uh, 
escutcheon we made here. And then we stapled it all the way around, around, around the edges with some uh, little uh, eighth inch staples. And then we took it and we mounted it on our can lid like this. And we used those same uh, one inch sheet metal screws. We just drilled a hole into the grill and uh, mounted it thus. And you can see it here. Here's our two mounting screws holding it in. And we have a, have a nice pair. As I say, you can get speakers, either buy them online or you can go find some junk speakers someplace. But this makes a nice, uh, interesting project for you. You might want to try this with your kids, too, as a uh, kind of a, uh, a parental type of project in audio. Hope you've enjoyed this program. We should be back with you in the future with some other programs on how to make speakers uh, for around the house.